This is Living Successfully with Bob Keaton. If you'd like to further pursue the conversation you're hearing here on Living Successfully, the book to read is A Cry in the Desert. It's by Byron Katie, and she's with me here in San Francisco. Katie, this is so much like trying to nail jello to the wall. It's not possible. And I wonder if that's not a metaphor for a lot of the things that we invest our time, our energy, and concern in these days. I mean, we haven't found peace on earth yet. Maybe we need to turn it around. Maybe the end of the world doesn't look like the end of the earth. Maybe the end of the world, sweetheart, is simply a 180 degree switch in perception. Which could look like the end of the world for some. Exactly. We lose our whole world when we step into the power of truth. We see it for what it really is. This is paradise. This is the Garden of Eden and we've been asleep a while. So simple inquiry for many are leaving the world as they knew it. And It's just as simple as going within and knowing for oneself what is true. And yet, you're not teaching meditation. There's not a technique that you're teaching. It's not even a philosophy at all. No. Four questions and what you call a turnaround. Yes. Yeah, no, nothing to teach. No one needs to learn. Just simple inquiry. You've traveled around the world. You have seen some of what I think of as really bad conditions. What needs to be done there? Well, you could ask them. I don't see that anything needs needs to be done. Like if you think, what needs to be done there? Turn it around. What needs to be done where you are? Begin there. Begin with you. I've seen people in ghettos happier than people in mansions. I mean, they need my help. I need to turn it around. I need my help when I think you need my help. You see, if I think my husband needs something, in that moment I need something, I need to get honest. If I think my husband needs the work, I need the work. So it keeps one in a constant state of presence doing their heart's desire, which is the thing in front of us, and to do it well, it's so simple. I say that life is... um, I was waiting for the burning bush, you know, to save my family, to save the world, and I wasn't able to even save myself. So I heard a voice one day. I was lying in bed and it said, brush your teeth. That simple. Can I just brush my teeth before I save the world? I lay in a bed for over two years, rarely leaving my bedroom. I was so paranoid and so broken internally and I would hear brush your teeth and I would maybe go months and I was not even able to brush my teeth my clothes would stick to me and my hair I wasn't able to bathe and nothing was going on but this thinking and I had no way through it so one day I heard brush your teeth and I got out of bed I crawled on my hands and knees to my toothbrush I learned to obey this voice the simplest thing and that was the burning bush you know can I just do the dishes can I just do that can I just brush my teeth and that's the burning bush and it's often overlooked I like to say I crawled to my toothbrush and it was not about cavities so this thing inside of me I honor it and that's my marriage and my husband's grateful too And often it seems that the burning bush is something that I want to find in order to show it to other people. Mm. Not for me, but I want to find this great thing for you so I can help you. And I would would experience that within me as arrogance. And you know what? Coming here, I met at Washington Dulles Airport with a lady from Brazil who said that very thing about most Americans. I asked her, well, what do you think of this country being your second trip here? She said, I would have to say, Americans are basically self-centered. Yes. Well, that described me for 43 years. She would be right about that. So when people encounter you, and they encounter the four questions, and do the work, what changes? Mm. Everything. 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 They step into a world 
that they didn't know existed, I hear. And they have my direct experience, I hear. You know, as they describe theirs, it sounds like mine. But it puts us in the awareness of a quality with no higher, no lower. And I really don't talk about what happens, but there are miraculous physical changes that take place where people are, I don't know, you know, I'm not much interested in the body. If a person is free and living happily, they could care less about their health. Is there advice that you have for folks who might be listening right now and thinking the same thing that I am? This is just too simple. Well, because you ask what I would say is, if there's someone out there that's suffering and they think the work would serve them, then welcome to the work. And it's free. You bet. Yes, it came freely. It goes out freely. And I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. I'm very grateful for this time with you.